Hello, everyone. Harry here to talk about a genuinely alarming decision by the Alabama Supreme Court. The holding is that um, fertilized ova in, in, uh, in uh, cryogenic test tubes or trays uh, for use in in vitro fertilization procedures for couples who are having trouble conceiving, that those fertilized eggs are the equivalent are, are, in fact, children under Alabama law who are, who are have the same rights as a newborn and whose um, destruction has the same consequences as the destruction of a young child. In other words, could could amount to a wrongful death lawsuit or potentially homicide. Probably already the mind reels just from thinking about the implications, but stick with me and it'll reel more and more. Okay, the facts of the case. A um, patient in a clinic, I don't, it's not clear whether the in vitro fertilization is sort of just part of a bigger uh, place or that's what it is, but, but wanders in or, or comes in maliciously. It, that would matter, of course, if what, uh, you know, if, if what the patient was doing was trying to steal uh, embryos, so through an unsecured door that should have been secured, and picks up um, two of the of the fertilized eggs. I don't know if you ever picked up dry ice, but the patient did what you do, which is immediately drop them because it it burns intensely. The those fertilized eggs were no longer usable, uh, and the man who provided the sperm, the mother who provided the eggs, sued uh, for wrongful death. The same suit you would have if, if, you know, you were like had charge over a, a two month old and just like, you know, left, left them, abandoned them to their own death. That would be a wrongful death lawsuit. Okay. So it's the equivalent of this with these fertilized um, eggs. All right. And the lower courts, uh, in Alabama, uh, said throughout the wrongful death lawsuit, but basically, because they raised a distinction between they, they didn't question the notion that these uh, this test tube contained a, a, a child uh, as defined under Alabama law, so a human being, but they said it matters under the law because they're not in utero and that's the distinction that that saves them. The Alabama Supreme Court disagrees. So they held uh, yesterday, that the uh, these were children under the law uh, because the law defines child to include unborn child. This to the court uh, are unborn children. I'll get back to that in a second. But among the just head spinning um, consequences of of what this could mean for the people and especially the women of Alabama. Uh, just this morning, the biggest teaching hospital in Alabama said we can't do IVF anymore because we could really wind up being accused of murder. You dispose of these things as part of the general process. And if this is the same thing as putting, uh, you know, two month olds in the dumpster, we're, we're going to, uh, be, uh, criminally prosecuted. We, so now couples in Alabama, around there can't do IVF. It's not available to them because of this totally crazy uh, decision. And, you know, more more things to, to come. Um, just one offhand, women in Alabama who em employ IUDs for birth control, those technically uh, terminate the pregnancy that's uh, of a fertilized egg would be the same thing under the Alabama Supreme Court uh, decision. Each time uh, that's done, that's, is it a negligent? Is it an intentional homicide, killing of a, of a human being? That's the unavoidable import of the Alabama uh, Supreme Court opinion. Okay. Most um, grievously or just you know, deplorably for uh, th this absolutely cataclysmic and co and um, hugely consequential holding was done basically without analysis. So the entire reasoning by the Alabama Supreme Court they uh, they talk about federal constitution, they talk about the state constitution, and they imply that the state constitution would protect even if the statutory law doesn't, but they rely on an 1872 law that defines child to, to include unborn child. 
All right, already very dicey, but no attempt whatsoever to wrestle with the distinction between a millisecond old fertile, frozen fertilized egg and a fully come to term in utero um, baby, the kinds of um, lives that, that are so uh, wrenching and raise such um, uh, issues, at least for some, about um, termination because, you know, they, they seem to be very much at a, they, the, the, you know, very developed fetuses uh, come in a certain point. Maybe that point is viability uh, to uh, feel very much like human beings doesn't settle the question whether it uh, a, a woman can terminate such a pregnancy, but but you know nevertheless uh, there is, and I wouldn't purport to to uh, try to define it, but some you know get a, get a whole room of uh, philosophers and obstetricians and religious clerics. And everyone else in, uh, you know, for a huge, uh, conclave to try to say when over the life, you know, from a fertilized egg to a fully born, uh, child, do we have a human being? Cause that's the thing that matters. Notice there's all kinds of sort of deceptive, um, rhetoric about it you know that a, that a um embryo or a fetus is alive if you um uh, stimulate it it will react etc and you know i i have no quibble i'm not a scientist or a philosopher to this extent but with the notion that maybe it is alive but that's just not the question at all the important question is is it a human being because it's a human being that is the foundation of all rights and liberties and responsibilities and injunctions not to harm. Uh, that's, you know, the whole foundation of our legal system and to just bring in willy nilly with literally no analysis, just fertilized eggs and say that that happens as well. You know, the consequences starting what, as we already know, are, um, mind boggling, but the arrogance is you know even uh more so so the you know you this uh this uh, negligent uh wandering patient is now looking at wrongful death but think of how many women are well think of how many couples now can't get ivf but think of how how many women are now under possible um siege and potential criminal and civil liability for um you know all kinds of uh, reproductive health services uh and you know who the hell is the Alabama Supreme Court I, I you know if a if a priest or rabbi or even came up and testified uh you know w we believe strongly that a uh, one week old is a human being okay so we could that that would be their belief we could cross examine on them we could decide whether society should accept that judgment. Next comes the philosopher. You know, I don't, I don't think there are many who would say this, but the philosopher who comes in, no, that's a human being. Next comes the some kind of probably very, um, marginal scientist. I don't think scientists hold, hold to this view generally. And then, you know, political officials. And so as, as is so often the case, this brings up the question, but in hugely consequential form, including, by the way, the politics of it. I mean, you know, this is uh, now uh, part and parcel. They could do this only because Roe has been overruled and it really presents in as pitched and um, kind of crazy, it seems to me, fashion as anything that's happened so far, the the um, consequences of the overruling of Roe v. Wade in the Dobbs decision. But it poses, as always, the question, who gets to decide, especially when the decision uh, imposes such terrible potential liability and just life changes and um, circumstances on, you know, in particular um, women. So the Alabama Supreme Court Literally, without giving a a line of thought to the stunningly obvious, you know, any cleric or philosopher would at least 
uh, wrestle with the idea. Here is why we should call this a human being. It may develop, you know, and you make your arguments and here is why we wouldn't. Instead, they've just completely um, bypassed all of that. And with a, you know, act of judicial um, imperialism just said, okay, yeah, th- this is the rule. A, uh, you know, a just fertilized egg outside the womb is uh, the, a child. And that means a human being. That's how it's defined under Alabama law. All right. So where is this going? I, you know, it's very, they actually, I, I think you will find this very litigation now, maybe they bumped into federal um, court. And if not, it really raises in as sort of pitched and, um, uh, you know, conflicted rubber hitting the road way, the uh, movements in different states to declare just, you know, because they say so, that life begins at conception and we really see what all the consequences are. But, you know, the hovering question here is, does the issue, is the question whether life begins at conception a question of federal constitutional law? You know, that seems Wow, that's uh, a little crazy, but certainly as as relative to state constitutional law, and you know there are and and what about just the equal protection rights of you know a woman is in Alabama, a woman's in New York, becomes pregnant, visits her um, uh, cousin in Alabama, decides to terminate the child, uh, you know the the the. That that's a muddled way of presenting equal protection. The main thing is such hugely different treatment of women, national citizens, under with federal constitutional rights, uh, based on the happenstance of where they live. One is arguably committed homicide or wrongful death, and and the other not. How can that be? How can um, and you could say how can we not have a consensus? as to when uh, uh, human life begins, but that's not even really the question. The bigger question is, in the obvious and perhaps insoluble situation of not having a consensus, how can a, a you know the, the justices of the Alabama Supreme Court so constrain and encumber the lives of Alabama women and really all citizens? It's it's really a um, an act of judicial arrogance, and again, un, uneven analyzed or explained judicial arrogance at its worst. And this, um, if it if it holds, the uh, closing of IVF um, services in the biggest uh, teaching hospital in Alabama is just the beginning. Talk to you later. Thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed this video and other Talking Feds content, please take a second to like and subscribe. Talk to you later.